questions 11 through 20 on the 2009 grade 8 AMC 8. The Amico Middle School Bookstore sells pencils costing a whole number of cents. Some 7th graders each bought a pencil paying a total of $1.43. Some of the 36th graders each bought a pencil and they paid a total of $1.95. How many more 6th graders than 7th graders bought a pencil? So 195 cents is the amount paid by the 6th graders. Now I need to break up 195 into its prime factors to get an understanding of how to break up the cost. So it's 3 times 5 times 13. Okay. Now let's talk about the 7th graders. They pay a total of 143 cents. That broke it up into its prime factors at 11 times 13. So what that tells me is that the price has to be the same, right? The pencil, each pencil costs the same for either a 6th grader or a 7th grader. And looking at this, that price must be 13 cents. And if it is, then this will be how many 6th graders there are, 3 times 5. So 15 of the 6th graders each paid 13 cents and that's how you get a total of 195. In a very similar way for the 7th graders the cost of the pencils has to be the same but the number of 7th graders therefore is 11 and if 11 of them each paid 13 cents that totals 143. So the question is asking how many more 6th graders than 7th graders bought a pencil? Well, 15 6th graders bought a pencil and 11 7th graders bought a pencil. So the difference is 4. So in number 11, the answer is D. The two spinners shown are spun once and each lands on one of the numbered sectors. What is the probability that the sum of the numbers in the two sectors is prime? All right, so there's only 3 and 3, so it doesn't take that long for us to write them all out, the combinations. So 1 and 2, 1 and 4, 1 and 6. And you can also have 3 and 2, 3 and 4, and 3 and 6. And then the other combination, of course, is 5 and 2, 5 and 4, and 5 and 6. So now we have to understand that there's 9 possibilities, so our probability will be something over 9. Now we have to figure out the sum. The sum of each of these, this one looks like 3, 5, 7. This is 5, 7, 9. And this is 7, 9, and 11. Now, how many of these are prime? That one, that one, that one, that, 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 and that. Almost all of them. So 7 of them are prime. So 7 over 9 is our probability for number 12, making that choice D. A three-digit integer contains one of each of the digits 1, 3, and 5. What is the probability that the integer is divisible by 5? All right, so again, we can figure out all the possible combinations pretty quickly. 1, 3, 5, 1, 5, 3. Or you can have 3, 1, 5, 3, 5, 1. Or you can have 5, 1, 3, 5, 3, 1. Now, there's six of them. So the probability is going to be something over 6. How many of these are divisible by 5? Well, a number is divisible by 5 if its final digit is 5 or 0. So this one is divisible by 5 and this one. And those are the only ones. So 2 of the 6. And of course, in lowest terms, that is 1 third. So number 13, the answer is B. Austin and Temple are 50 miles apart on along the Interstate 35. And Bonnie drove from Austin to her daughter's house in Temple, averaging 60 miles per hour. Leaving the car with her daughter, Bonnie rode a bus back to Austin along the same route and averaged 40 miles per hour on the return trip. What was the average speed for the round trip in miles per hour? So here's Austin and here's Temple, and there's 50 miles separating. So on the journey to Temple, uh, it's 60 miles per hour, so we have speed is equal to distance over time. So time is equal to distance over speed. So that first one, the time will be the distance is 50, 
and the speed is 60 miles per hour. On the way back, same kind of story, the time will be distance over speed, but this time the distance is also 50, but the speed is not the same because uh, she's taking a bus, right? Yeah, she's taking a bus back. So now this is 40. So in lowest terms, this is 5 over 6, and this is obviously 5 over 4. Now to figure out the average speed for the entire trip, it would be the total distance over the total time. And therefore, the total distance there and back is 100, 50 times 2. And the total time is 5 over 6 plus 5 over 4. So we do this math and we get, let's see here, 100, and then we have to add this fraction, top and bottom 4, top and bottom 6. So we got 20 plus 30, which is 50 over 24. And if you invert and multiply, you get 100 over 1, 24 over 50. And that looks like 2 times 24 which is 48. And that is the average speed for the round trip. So number 14, the answer is B. A recipe that makes five servings of hot chocolate requires two squares of chocolate, a quarter cup of sugar, one cup of water, and four cups of milk. Jordan has five squares of chocolate, two cups of sugar, lots of water, and so infinity, and seven cups of milk. If she maintains, Jordan, she maintains the ratio, common ratio, same ratio of ingredients, what is the greatest number of servings of hot chocolate she can make? Okay. So, we don't have to worry about water. She's got more than enough water. And then let's look at the ratios, first of all. 5 over 2 is 2.5, right? 2 divided by a quarter is 8. 7 divided by 4 is 7 over 4, which is a little over, it's like uh, 1.75, right? So we have to look at which ingredient is um, the minimum, meaning the lowest in terms of the ratio. And the lowest is obviously this one. That is sort of our limiting factor that limits how much we can make. So 7 over 4 is the maximum. So 7 over 4 is going to be equivalent to x over 5, x representing the amount of hot chocolate that we can make. So this is going to be 35 is 4x. And therefore, x is equal to 35 over 4. And in terms of, I guess, mixed fractions or whatever, that's going to be 8 and 3 quarters. 8 and 3 quarter cups of hot chocolate is the maximum that Jordan can make with her ingredients. So number 15, the answer is D. How many three-digit positive integers have digits whose product equals 24? three digits, and if you multiply these three digits together, it's going to be 24. So what is 24, first of all, in terms of its prime factors? It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Okay, let's figure out what possible numbers we can have. We can have 2, 2, and 6. I'm going entirely based on the prime factors. I can also have 2, 4, and 3. I can have 1, 4, and 6, or I can have 1, 8, and 3. All of these would work. But you see these answer choices are much bigger than 4. Why? Because each of these can be rearranged to form different ones, right? This first one forms 6, right? I mean, I'll just do 1, 1, 8, 3, 1, 3, 8, 8, 1, 3, 8, 3, 1, 318 and 381, right? This one also can form 6, and this one can also form 6. But be careful on this one here. Do not put 6 
because if you put 6, then you'll get an answer of 24, and if you circle 24, that is wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, because here we have two digits that are the same. So it only produces three combinations, 226, 262, or 622. So in my opinion, that is something that a lot of students would miss. So now if you add them up, you get 21 and 21 which is choice D, is the correct answer to number 16. The positive integers x and y are the two smallest positive integers for which the product 360 in x is a square and the product 360 in y is a cube. What is the sum of x and y? 360 x is some square, so m squared. And 360y is some cube, so n to the power of 3. Okay. What we need to do is immediately look at the prime factors of 360. So it's going to be a lot. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. Right? And then, of course, don't forget about this x. And that has to equal some some square. So how do we get a square? Well, keep in mind that because this whole thing is a perfect square, the prime factors have to be either double or, or quadruple, right? So for example, the threes are already in that format. There's, it's three times three, so that's already a perfect square. So that we can leave alone. But unfortunately, we've got this lone 5 in here. So the x has to have a 5 in it. If it does, then this, this 5 and this 5 combine, and that will definitely fit what we want. It will become part of a perfect square. Now, don't forget about these 2s here. Yeah, we have two twos. Those guys are perfect. They will match the fact that it creates part of a perfect square. But then you have this lone 2 here, and that lone 2 needs a partner. So that's why the x also has to have a 2, because when that 2 combines with that 2, it will contribute to becoming a perfect square. So x, therefore, is 5 times 2, which is 10. All right? Now we turn our attention to this guy, which is the exact same prime factors. And then we have to talk about this in the same way, but we, now we want a perfect cube. Well, the only one that's sort of a perfect cube is the 2s. 2 times 2 times 2, that's already a perfect cube. So that one we can leave alone. But then we have, again, this lone 5. We need to have at least two 5s for that to match up with that to become a perfect cube, right? And then we have two 3s, so we can add just one 3, and that should be sufficient to make that a perfect cube. So y must be 3 times 5 times 5, which is 75. And there you go. x is 10, y is 75, and they want you to find the sum of x plus y, so that's 10 plus 75, and that is equal to 85. So number 17, the answer is B. The diagram represents a 7 foot by 7 foot floor that is tiled with 1 square foot black tiles and white tiles. Notice that the corners have white tiles. If a 15 foot by 15 foot floor is to be tiled in the same manner, how many white tiles will be needed? So a quick way of figuring out how many white tiles is you take the fact that the edge is 7 feet. And each of these tiles alternates, right? It goes white, black, white, black, like that. So because it alternates, if you take 7 and add 1 and divide by 2, that gives you how many white tiles you will have. In this case, 4. So you do the same thing with the 15 by 15 floor tile. Its side will be 15. All you have to do is just add 1, divide by 2, and that is 8. And that's how many white tiles it will be along one edge. And therefore, there's 8 along this edge, and then there's 8 along that edge. So the total will be 8 times 8, and that is equal to 64. So number 18, the answer is C. 
Two angles of an isosceles triangle measure 70 in x. What is the sum of the three possible values of x? Let's draw three isosceles triangles. And let's proceed with the question. So the first scenario is if you have x here and 70 here. If it is indeed isosceles, that will also be x. The next scenario is if you have x here and 70 here. And since this is isosceles, these two are the same, so x equals 70. And the third scenario is when you have x here and 70 here, and since this is isosceles, that will also be 70. So now let's calculate the values of x. For this first one, 2x plus 70 is equal to 180. So that means 2x is equal to 110. x is equal to 55. This one we already got. This one, x plus 140 is equal to 180. And therefore, x is equal to 40. So our three values are 55, 70, and 40. And if you add them up, 55 plus 70 plus 40 is equal to 165. So number 19, the answer is D. How many non-congruent triangles have vertices at three of the eight points in the array below? Okay, so we gotta, you know, go through this in a painful way. So what I do in these kinds of questions is I just label them. It just makes it a little easier for me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And I'll just show you which ones are the non-congruent. The first one is if you have a scenario of A, B, E. Something like that. That would be 1, 1, 1, and this would be your triangle. The next one that's not congruent is something like A, B, G. So that would be A, B, but then you'd have 1, and one over, so it's a triangle like this. And the next one that's non-congruent is ABH. So this one is AB and then two over and then H at the bottom like this, like that. So this one is a little bit different, right? It looks like that. So those are three. The next three are something like A, C, E. So you got one, two, three, and then E here. So this is what it looks like. And then the next non-congruent one is A, C, E. Sorry, A, C, F. And that one, here you have A, B, C, and then F is here. So it will look like this. And then the next one that is non-congruent is ACH. And that one looks like this. You have A, B, C, and then you have H down here. So it's going to be like that. Okay? So, so far we have six, and we got two more that are non-congruent. The next one is ADE. So you have A, and you've got D, so all the way across, and then we have E down here, something like that. And then the next one is ADF, that also A, D, and F, that will also be non congruent, and it looks something like this. And finally, A, D, H. But actually, no, we're done, <laughs> finally. Uh, I, these are these are painful questions. All right, I did it. ADH is going to be the same as ADE, by the way, just in case you're wondering. All right, so as you can see, I got eight of them, and that means that this question, the answer is D.